Hello Thistledown gang and welcome back to my channel. If you've already been here, if not, hi, I'm Hedge and uh, this is my channel and this is the very first installment of Thrift Fixes, the part of this show uh, where I take things that I've thrifted. You might have seen some of my uh, thrift, thrift holes. I'm, a, I'm just put that there. I think it's there. Uh, Where I take things that I have thrifted or, you know, stolen from my mom's closet or that are already in my closet and it doesn't even have to be clothing and make it a tiny bit cooler, a tiny bit more fitting, stylistically or, you know, in terms of shape uh, and show you how I do that. And for the very first installment of this, hopefully, series, uh, we have a particularly peculiar fellow and that would be this strange basket fish whose uh, tail fin I've already removed and yeah uh, so this thing has, has a, 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 a wicker chain and um, there used to be another chain but I already removed that too uh, so what is with this thing? Why do I have it? What the heck? I decided to save that explanation for later, just in case I would be talking too fast in the voiceover and needed additional audio. So now we have this and um, I mean, it's it's pretty awesome <laughs> all by, it, by itself already, uh, but it's not exactly perfect. Um, why I have already removed the back fin, that's because uh, it was reattached already, it didn't, didn't look that good. Um, and now I am going to make that thing look a bit more weathered and uh, hopefully a tiny bit cooler or at least weirder. So let's see what I can do with this. Okay, first things first, I wanted the fish to have eyes. Actual cold shimmery fish eyes. Thanks to a trip to the riverside a few days before I started this project, I had the perfect material. River shells. I scrub them clean, dish soap and a toothbrush are your friend and look at how shiny they got. Like wow, so shiny! Ahem. I estimated the size needed by putting a piece of paper over the eyes that were already there and hatching over them just like you would do with inscriptions or engravings that you want to read better or take home. Then I used chalk to get the size onto the actual shells and then well, that wasn't ideal, and uh, neither was this, and while this was interesting, we will skip it until I get to the idea that actually works. To save the shells from breaking and being completely wasted, I glued them onto fabric scraps. This way they can break however they want, but still stay in the desired shape. I justified this by telling myself that this, albeit with bone glue or birch tar or some such, would be an accessible method for the imaginary craftsperson who would have made this fish thing in game. I got priorities, okay? Anyway, um, after that I could simply trim the shells with crafting scissors, which was incredibly satisfying. Again, estimating probable materials, I decided to paint the eyes with ink rather than a sharpie or acrylics. I've painted shell discs with inks before and it works beautifully. The pigments and the natural sheen make such a lovely combination. I use Vincent Newton, who don't sponsor me at all, by the way, sadly. Uh, I eyeballed the pupil and added a black ring around the iris to get more of a cold dead fish eye stare and to visually even out the shape.
I then decided that the whole wicker situation didn't look sufficiently like it had been exposed to the elements for a while. Far too shiny. I put the whole thing in the tub, doused it with bleach, left it overnight, rinsed it off and then set it out to dry in the heat for another day. And that was much better. So the poor thing had dorsal fins and the tail but no pectorals whatsoever, so I found myself a stick with enough forks to make some. Had I more patience, I could have tried to find something closer to the original wicker. Alas, I have none. They would be covered anyway. I sawed off the two most promising forks and whittled the ends flat so I could wedge them into the weave of the fish. Remember how I said the wool of the pectorals wouldn't be important literally like 10 seconds ago? This is why. I decided to make them a bit more fluttery and flowy as opposed to the stiff wicker fins that the fish already had, considering that it would be outside most of the time and still makes the best streamers ever. I didn't only want two fins to flutter however, so I started by weaving strips of silk through the dorsal fins as well. It took a bit of twisting to get ends that would push through well enough and I needed to stab the whole affair with a knife at some points, but eh. The tail fin was a bit different as I needed to reattach it as well, but I decided to simply work with some more silk strips here too. I was going for some sort of fancy goldfish tail that would look good in the breeze and the colors of the silk remind me of seaweed which is just so lovely. A lot of maritime decor in LARP, or anything that centers around water or the sea really, is only shades of blue and maybe grey if you're experimental. But when you look at places like Brittany or uh, Northern Germany or the Netherlands for example, there's a lot of yellows and greens going on and I absolutely love this palette. Now while I experiment a bit more with this method, here's the explanatory bit from the beginning that I promised, namely the answer to what the heck made you spend 5 euros on that? So, at LARP, we play a group of coast guards. Medieval, renaissance-ish, fantasy coast guards. Anyway, and uh, we like maritime decor, of course. And this thing was so weird that when I came across it at a thrift shop, um, I sent my group a text saying, hey, do, do, we, do we want this? And they said yes. I had already been out of the shop again when I got their messages so I wasn't sure if it was still there but apparently nobody wants a weird basket fish except for me. I attached the eyes next because I wanted that done before the pectorals made things a bit more unwieldy. I used glue again and held the shells in place with wires as they dried which worked surprisingly well. It was the same wire I'd used as a needle substitute with a tail fin. I wedged in the pectoral fins and first tried to glue them down, but in the end that neither worked nor was it really necessary, because the silk strips were enough. This time I used an actual darning needle, because A, I needed to be a bit more precise working inside the fish and everything, and B, I had finally found it, before I had used a wire to improvise with that. The same wire that I used with the eyes, I already said that. Um, I did a super simple, and that's not even a weave, is it, um, with the pectoral fins, and then installed some more streaming potential along the sides, just to make for a bit more flutter in the whole thing. The silk weaving really took the most time in this project. There were like four hours of footage and most of it was just silk weaving. Anyway, the eyes weren't what I wanted them to be just yet and they were lacking structure. 
After some experiments, I reused the wicker chain links for the ridges by cutting them open and wiring them into rings. And you can guess what I used to attach them. Exactly, more silk. Again, with the biggest darning needle that I own. And in the end I just added a rope handle and now we have a weird fish in our camp. Yay. We used it for some LED candles this year, which was strange but in a cute way, and just used it to store random stuff that was lying around in camp and annoyed everyone. And I think everyone just adopted this thing as a mascot, which is really nice, I guess. I am aware that highly specific doesn't even begin to describe this project and I think the next one will be more generally applicable. But I hope you still like this foray into the realms of the weird stuff I do for my hobby. Um, and if you did, consider giving this video a thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you haven't yet, that would mean so much to me. Or leave a comment with the strangest bit of wicker art you've found so far thrifting or anything else. Have a lovely day, be nice to yourself, be nice to others, and we'll see each other next time. And I bid you adieu for now. Bye!